So I'm here with Angelo Peters of Big Mean Sound Machine, and we are going to be talking about a couple of things. First off, um, why don't you give me a little background? Let's set this up. Big Mean Sound Machine has been in business for how long? Uh, about five years at this point. We started off in uh, uh, the summer of 2009. We just um, went to the studio to record uh, just some music that we'd all been working on, the four of us at the time, that were like the core of the band. Maybe and couple. that was you? Myself, uh, Andrew Klein, right. uh, keyboard player Rob Tate, guitarist Jeb Henry, and then also Bobby Spellman was there, Emily Pecoraro was there, Remy Kunstler was there, and then Brian Davis was also kind of there, loosely. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just the four of us mainly, uh, Jeb, Rob, Klein, and myself, and we uh, just worked on some tunes that, nothing we really play anymore, uh, like musically, the songs we we play them occasionally, but yeah, we just kind of worked on these these few few tracks that led to us um, kind of, uh, basically forming the band. We kind of had an idea for it, and there was a show that a few of us were supposed to play at at what is lot ten now. It was the Lost Dog then mm -hmm. um, in the summer of two thousand nine. And a friend of mine was supposed to play, and he just like Brett Beardsley, and he showed oh, up, okay. and uh, he just had a guitar, and he was like, "Oh, I didn't know I was playing a whole set. I thought I was just gonna sit in with you guys." So he just wasn't ready to do a set, and kind of wasn't feeling it. So we had been working on all this music, like in the weeks leading up to that time. So we were like, "All right, let's just play a show as Big Mean Sound Machine," and then we just kept kept doing that. There. And then we did it a couple night, a couple more nights that summer because it was relatively easy to book gigs in the summertime. Just sure. because no one was around. And we just did a lot, a bunch of shows at, uh, at the, what was it, uh, the Lost Dog, yeah, right. at that time. And um, then did a couple of shows at Castaways, and then from there on out we started playing. And the rest of the say was yeah. history. But it was always Afrobeat. Yeah, kind of. It was a lot more like, yeah, it was pretty much we had the same ge mm -hmm. general idea. There was a lot of jazz fusion, a lot of Afrobeat, sure. a lot of funk, a lot of electronic stuff, but then primarily music that just makes you want to dance and right. whatever that whatever that right. ends up being like right. uh you know we've been incorporating tons of different types of music now because i feel like we have no boundaries sure. as long as it makes people dance and it's funky sure. so you so certainly succeed at that well, um, that's the goals <laughs> you've got yeah i mean and, and the band is now is now um i mean with its rotating membership yeah. it's gotten to be pretty yeah big. it gets a little crazy at times we've had to like kind of uh get a little more specific about like what we're traveling with the amount mm -hmm. of people because like once you get more than 10 people on stage anywhere no matter how big the stage and sure. like the you know just traveling and even in a giant band and trailer like we have like yeah. it's 10 people it's just it's a lot of people but at the same time it's also really nice because there's a lot of deflecting things that can happen with 10 personalities around where like when you're just in the van with three people over and over and over and over yeah. and over again it can get a little old but when it's 10 rotating people it makes every time you're out like kind of a different experience sure which is really cool and it also makes it for like all the people who see us all the time right. a different experience almost every show when because you mix it's it never up. the same lineup sure you know? sure um, and i've noticed that that there are times when lines that were being played by the brass will be played picked up by the keyboard yep, or, totally. or mixed up. Yeah, it also yeah. makes us yeah a little more in tune with the music in that way because right. it forces people to have to know other people's parts sure. when they're not there. And we don't rehearse really ever, um, which you know, yeah. <laughs> for better or worse. But like you right. know, we we don't really have time to because I'm one of the few people who lives here, and then pretty much the, half of the band lives in New York, and then right. another quarter lives in Boston. Right. Um, so we're kind of split up, but we do get to play enough that it makes it relatively easy to kind of just pick up where we left off. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a learning experience, but at the same time, it's really nice to kind of have a rotating cast because it can allow you to play all the time. Sure. And with, um, you know, as many as eight or 12 people in like a lineup of a band, you, it's hard to get that many schedules. Like, yeah, of course. But if you have like 18 people to choose from and nine can make it work, right. all of a sudden you're talking about like a realistic sure. touring, um, Sure. Ensemble, so yeah, it's really fun. And now we've, uh, you know, we've been working with Russ Friedel, uh, uh -huh. who manages Jim Cotta, and he's been managing us. So that's been kind of helpful, also, like yeah, to the next level. So yeah, he's he's a he's a solid guy. He he totally is, and he knows what he's doing. And he's been um, working at this level with a band for a long time. Right. So that's like what we needed is someone to step in and kind of be fighting for us that wasn't inside the band. Because sure. up until this point, pretty much we'd done everything in house, um, right. with the exception of Contraband being the first record where we worked without side producers on everything else we've done before that videos everything we'd all done within the family sure. so to speak now yeah. so that segues nicely into 
um, what's coming up because starting in February yep. you guys are going on tour yeah totally we're we're picking up a couple shows in, in, in January and early February but the kickoff really is um, at the Rongo right. uh, on the 13th of February and then we're uh, the next night we're going to DC so let's and let's then, hold it right there and start at the at the at the start yeah, yeah. you're playing at the Rongo the Rongo, yeah, yeah, the Rongo. I assume reopened. this is the first time that yeah, the yeah, big time absolutely. machine's been yeah, at the Rongo. Yeah, totally. um, so that's exciting because sure. I I saw like Derek Trucks band yeah, there oh when God, I was a kid, you right. know, and like um, there's been a lot of different really awesome, uh, like tons of awesome shows over the years. Uh, but most of the stuff happened before I was old enough to drink, right. <laughs> which is funny to think about. But you know, when I first moved here in 2006. I was 18, and sure. I remember the Rongo closed like pretty, pretty quickly thereafter. Yep. At least they didn't have any music. Right. Um, so, yeah. So I, I've never played a show there, and uh, this is exciting for us just because it's kind of a hometown thing. Like you know, Hector and and, and Ithaca have definitely been like our hometown. Sure. Um, and this is kind of I feel like going to be a new extension of like that. Mm -hmm. that uh, tight knit home base, yeah, and uh, and and family. You know, it's like all these places that we play, like you know, of course in Ithaca, like it's the roots are deep, and then sure. out in Hector, you know, all the places we played, it's 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 been family oriented, and uh, the Rongo with Jess and, and Jeremy in the kitchen, like all these people that we've known as right. a band for yeah. years. Uh -huh. um, it's really crazy. Like Jeremy was in the kitchen. The first record we did um, in 2009 was at his lake house that oh, he had in, in Lansing, cool. like okay. way out of yeah. the lake. So yeah, it's like you know, it's all like uh -huh. six degrees of. You know some weird separation uh -huh. like that, and then you know Stone Cat with Jess booked was one of the first places we played regularly. Right. So um, it's cool to see it come full circle again, and also like in a just a bigger way. You know now there's like a real sound system there, yeah. and, um, and the that, way they, they oriented the stage. Yeah, it's great, and it looks great. The whole place is cool. Yeah, the staff's it, great, and, and we're excited to kind of be hopefully you know one of the, the you know first really big shows uh, yeah. that happens there. So that's the kickoff, and then we're going all the way down to Miami and back right. uh, for the the Virginia Key Grassroots that's right. held. Um, in uh, in Miami, Florida. and where are you stopping along the way? Bunch of places. Um, we're doing I think 17 shows uh, there and back uh, with a couple you know a couple days off. Um, but we're uh, doing we're doing three gigs at the festival, um, and then we're doing um, like highlights for me is Asheville, North Carolina. A lot of my close friends live there, and it's just a like desirable spot for us sure. to start wanting to play all the time. Um, and Athens, Georgia, is another spot. Um, also. Uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Cool. Uh, Charleston Poorhouse. Um, uh, uh, DC. Um, we're playing the spot called the Bayou in DC, uh -huh. which is definitely a spot we're trying to really break into. Now, um, was Russ involved in booking these? Yeah, pretty much. Here? I booked yeah. some of the stuff, and uh -huh. then he booked a, a good chunk of the stuff. You know, he booked most of the, aside from like the festival and a few other things, right. he booked most of the dates on the, sure. on the run. Um, but yeah, like things like Philadelphia, you know, Philadelphia, we're wrapping the tour up at, and like. Uh -huh. uh, Harrisburg, PA, like some places that we have some history in, mm -hmm. but it's been like a little while since we've been there. Right. Um, so it's going to feel kind of, it's going to be nice. It'll be a good run. We're really it excited. Like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it's cool because we'll get to see a ton of friends along the way. And like we've been itching to really do something to this uh, magnitude for a while. You sure. Know, like now, do you weeks. feel like this is in support of, I mean, because Contraband came out. You know, the end of last spring. Definitely, is, because all these markets we haven't yeah. brought the record to right, yet. Sure. So yeah, and most bands like at a national level would tour on a record for at least a year. Yeah. And it's been only about eight months since we released Contraband, right. and the vinyl we've only had for about six months. Right. So yeah, this is definitely a tour in support of that of that release, mm -hmm. uh, no doubt. So we're really excited to 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 really go up and down, and of course, like the obvious, getting out of. The Northeast in February to go hang out in Miami for a week. Sure, does it doesn't. Yeah, doesn't not <laughs> you know, make sense. That's what we've been we've been kind of shooting for that like kind of general goal as a band to get out of the Northeast in the winter time. Uh -huh. You know, and we're finally this is the first year in doing that. So this is like a huge step for us, even in just that simple way of just sure. being like, all right, let's a lifestyle this. change. Yeah, well, I mean that's what it's all about. You <laughs> yeah, know, it's like you're not going to make a ton of money with a right. band with ten people in it, no. but like there's a way you can survive and part of that is like piecing together all those little things that make it much more uh, enjoyable to be uh -huh. on the road and, and to, <laughs> you know, to travel. Right. Uh, so. That's interesting. So how, how just in, in terms of the logistics of moving that many people. Mm. So how are you? How are you? Uh, how are you transporting yourselves? Well, we just bought a new trailer, okay. uh, so that's like one is that you have a giant trailer. You know, right. we have uh, all of our our gear and all of our personal stuff fits in there, and then the you know we have a van, like a fifteen person 
Ford van that right. uh, is, you know, they're just that's what you kind of the standard um, that you start with at right. least when you're touring, and that fits ten pretty comfortably. Mm -hmm. um, more than that, it gets a little crazy, but it's doable, you know. And sure. and you start with that, and then you kind of go from there. But we actually talked about getting a bus. We looked into various options with that because mm -hmm. um, that could be easy, but. Uh, or maybe easier compared to dealing with the trailer and all that stuff. But honestly, that's like, you know, there's a couple different ways you can do it. That's how we've done it. And and sometimes there'll be cars involved, beating sure. and things like that, because we're all spread out across the Northeast. But right. for this tour, we're all pretty much going to hop in the van. And drive. Uh, yeah, <laughs> after the Rongo show and drive to D.C. And then from right. there, we do the rest of the tour. So. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, there's some, some flying, like uh, one of the guys is going to fly in for a week and then fly back out. Um, there's a couple little things like that, but... More often than not, it's we all just uh, end up in the van with the trailer. All right. So it's yeah, it's be not a that, big adventure. Yeah, it's not that like <laughs> glamorous or anything, but it is a really fun time. You know, we bought sure. a van pretty early on, like almost immediately. Yeah. Like we like six months into the 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 band, we were like, okay, cool, we're gonna do this. So we right. bought a trip of the same van we have that we're gonna take on the run, um, and uh, and a trailer, and that was kind of what we decided we were gonna do. It's like. A lot of bands kind of take a while to piece that together sure but it was honestly a good building experience for us because we initially when we first started out we had a lot we had a residency in philadelphia so we were driving there every other week during the summertime uh, yeah. for a while for like the first two years of the band uh -huh. and uh we um we needed we just needed a vehicle so that was like the smartest option and at that point we could kind of fit almost everything in the van but then we bought a trailer when we started touring with 10 people right. and all that you know uh the rest is history but it uh it there's a bonding in like being stuck in like a small space oh, with yes. all the people and then the, if you don't get to rehearse that also helps you kind of talk things through because sure. we're as much about the the metaphysical and the like uh the thought process the theory behind what we're doing so sure. like you're all professional musicians well yeah there's that but it's like as you have to be people too and yeah, like sure. and the thing is that like you have to you have to really think about it and like a lot of a lot of musicians get caught up in the like musicianship and for us we're trying to just get caught up in more like the humanity and what we're doing right. so like if you can talk through the I bigger ideas of what you're doing of course nitpick the little things right. it sometimes is better than like wasting six hours like rehearsing a song over and over and with sure. our music it's like it's not jamming it's like there's improvised spots but if you sit there you could rehearse it a different way every time and the point sure. is it's like one you feed off the crowd and all that stuff but it, you need to convey feelings and emotions and ideas right. and less about like playing licks and like doing cool stuff on like, whatever sure. instrument you play you know sure. it's more about getting the instrument out of the way and like speaking a vocabulary if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. And like, and, no, I can see that in the music. And you have to be, and, and for us, it's more important sure. for a group to sit down and talk about it rather than just sit in a room and play it. So in the van, it's been like this really crucial experience of like talking out songs. Where you build up the common yeah, vocabulary. Yeah, exactly. And if yeah. people know like what's, what's kind of, like instead of playing it and listening back and being like, oh, I didn't like how you played that, if you talked it through in the first place and you're like, like, no tambourines ever, don't play a tambourine. Right. And then someone's like, oh, okay, cool, I'm never going to play a tambourine, right. you know? And then, yeah. Sure, that's funny, because yeah. there was that uh, Facebook post where Shakir says, you know, you, it's a picture of you guys, and he said, and you do ba ba da 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 and then the drum does dub 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 and it's like, I can just see that going on. Oh, yeah, totally, there's a lot of that, yep. Yeah, it gets pretty specific, but, uh, but yeah, there's definitely... Um, yeah, we talk about stuff a lot more. You know, like the horn parts are charted, sure. and I write like a lot of the demos, or or at least arrange them here. Uh -huh. And uh, and and now more and more and more other guys in the band are doing so. And and what we'll do is there'll be like a demo, and it's like here's the drum sure. beat, here's the bass line, right. here's the guitar parts, right. which is funny. We use a computer to make, sure. and then we play this like totally live music. You know, it's weird how how that works out. But then you have the horns who chart all of their parts, right? Of course, because that's kind of four harmonies. You don't right. really mess with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we all get together having having all of that knowledge. Then you kind of try to craft something, right? Um, if that makes any sense. And yeah. doing that so by talking, I think makes a lot. It it makes things happen quicker, maybe. That's fascinating. And, it, and it's it's more at least efficient for us because sure. we we also kind of never jammed as a band or did any stuff like that. Like that mm -hmm. was kind of like not even a f option because the band was so large and we also like pretty much immediately didn't live in the same state right you know at one point there was like a mass exodus to boston and a right. lot of people left and, and, and moved there and lived there for a while um <laughs> which i strongly oppose but <laughs> and still, but uh, but that's a whole other story but like they uh 
that that was like a whole thing for a while. So pretty much immediately it was like to rehearse. It was like I had to go to Boston or whatever. And then now most people live in New York. Everyone likes to go to New York, and I, you know I don't mind going there. So it's a good. Sure. It's, we're kind of based out of New York these days, except for the majority of our workings happen here. Like we get together, and when we do get the slim t- time to rehearse or we do videos, or we do big shows, or we do studio stuff, it's all up here. Right. And this was kind of home base, because the band started here, no sure. doubt. So, um, and it's a central... And it is kind of a central located place, like for touring, Boston, honestly. Yeah. Well, yeah, from Boston it's whatever, but the, uh, the thing for us is like, pretty much everything is west and south of right. New York. Right. And Ithaca is a ways your place for people to come and like leave their car and like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's just a common ground. Also, sure. I have a place here, Dana lives here, Jamie right. lives here. Um, so it's kind of been, uh, it seems to be like the common thread. And also, I think everyone secretly has, you know, that love, for, even though people who don't live yeah, here, they right. all have that love for it. You know, we can yeah. hate on it all day, but you know, right. we all, there's a reason why we all come back sure. here. And, and especially with, there's a reason why we throw shows here because people respond to it, right. you know, in the way, the we, I think, I don't know, the, the response that we enjoy, you know, the response sure. that, that makes it mutually a, a, a positive thing for everybody, yeah. you know. It's interesting because the, the breadth of music that's available in this region is, is really insane. And, yeah, and yeah, it is. The, the fact that the Ithaca area can support, not just support, but allow to thrive an Afrobeat band Mm-hmm. is just an indication of how mm-hmm. how deep that is. Yeah. So, um, to bring it back around, you are booking for both The Haunt and The Dock yep. at this point. Mm-hmm. And the, the Dock reopened last year. Yep. And uh, that was after it had been, it had been closed for, I guess, about... It closed years. in May of 2012, I yeah, believe, yeah. and then so we opened in March, and of, and March of 2014. Yeah. yeah, and so that was a, a fairly, ex, you know, a long period of, of lying vacant, dormant. But, yeah, um, definitely. But The Haunt has now closed for a month. Yeah, about a little less than a month. For, yeah. for what purpose? Renovations, repainting everything. Uh, we redid the, the entire sound system, which was a big one. Uh, so it was like brand new sound system. Uh, the stage has been repainted, redone the back walls, the ceiling, the, you know, all the walls. We're redoing like the wall of fame, um, the bathrooms, the uh, the green room is being redone, the offices. So is it going to be as lot. dramatic a... No, no. Well, I mean, it's going to definitely look a lot nicer and uh-huh. a lot. It's, it's a lot. I mean, I've, I've seen it so far after the paint, sure. paint job and stuff. It looks great. Um, but the ambiance is the same. I mean, it's 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 going to be a new haunt that that for a positive, right. you know, for for a good for the good. I, I mean, yeah. I think that the haunt is just it's been neglected for a while. I mean, it, sure. it got opened in that space, and I believe the year two thousand yep. or two thousand one, yep. yep. and um, it kind of never had it had no facelift or anything since. And sure. fifteen years later, it kind of needs that, and it's ready for that. So mm-hmm. um, mo- most there's no like big structural changes or mm-hmm. anything. All the wood in there has been repolished. Cool. All the walls have been painted. Sweet. All the lights that were broken have been fixed. Uh-huh. The sound system that had been in need of repair for 10 years has been replaced. You know, some things just to make the club a better place and a sure. more inviting. There's, like, you know, things like new coat racks and, and new furniture and, and, and some stuff like that. And, like, uh-huh. uh... Just overall, a really, a really, you know, a, a facelift, a rather facelift. Than, than, yeah, than, yeah. A, than a complete renovation. Yeah, there's no complete renovation. Sure. Like as far we didn't move the stage, we didn't yeah. move the bar, we didn't do anything like that. Yeah. It's all uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. But it, uh-huh. it, it's definitely the the needed, you know, the to, needed, move, to move to move it right to place. Yeah, yeah, next. totally. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of great shows coming up, yeah. and um, it's uh, it's a, an exciting time for the Ithaca music scene because it's been you know doing this for a while, yeah. and I feel like it's been kind of starting to just really build back up nicely, yeah. um, in the last year or so. Yeah. Um, so I'm yeah I'm definitely excited. So. Good. Well, Angelo Peters, of Big Mean Sound Machine, thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate Absolutely. you very much, and yeah. have a great great tour. Yeah.